Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the final match to be broadcasted today. This is going to be Inverse Esports versus Vicious and Delicious. I'm Verbalosti here with my co-cast that has been for today, Mr. Lord Wizkid, and also our production master for today. Let's get this. Oh, we should probably introduce Vicious and Delicious. I don't believe we've seen them. No. Today. This is yep. This is the last and um, last team of our top eight. We've been going through each and every single one of them, along with I believe Inverse Esports has been the one that we've been looking at on Group B, and then on the side of Group A, we've been following the side of Burly Man. So those why those are why we've been seeing those two teams a lot. But we've seen every single other team. Um, and this will be the last one, so it's Vicious and Delicious, and on their side, we are going to see in the dual lane, it will be on her being played by Trifer, then Metempsychosis will be on that Jing Chan in the support role, in the mid lane will be Ninja Sniper on Isis, Benny Q will be playing Fenrir Jungle, and Tupac will live on that Cabracton solo lane. I... I really want to make some sort of Shaw, Shakur, Tupac Shakur thing. I can't think of anything. But, moving into the game, we do see the bands. It looks like, I don't believe the bands have glitched. It looks like Vicious Delicious skipped a ban. It must be the case. I doubt it would be anything otherwise, as uh, unless it could just be, it could be that there is a bug with the spectator. But, as you can see, uh, Inverse Esports banned out Thor, Geb, and Sir Ket. Meanwhile, Vision Delicious banned out Sun Wukong and Giannis with what seems to be a uh, missing ban. So. Yeah. So, we have seen Giannis once or twice today. He mm. got banned out for majority of the games after that. Geb, we've seen him banned out occasionally. Hup Ho Yi has been someone that we've been seeing every we have, single game, basically. Yeah, he has been played every single game. Um, there is not a single game we haven't seen him in today, but for very good reasons, because he can effectively carry a game. It is one of those very interesting things of the fact that people just prioritize him so much because he is so good in early game damage. We do see in the mid lane, Vicious Delicious, I think they took both sides of the mid camps and they're actually going to do a lot of damage onto Glavius, sitting him about half health already. And then more importantly, Mango, uh, Mango de Bay did not find the Aegis Shield followed by the slowing lightning. So that's not going to hurt him too much. And meanwhile, while that was happening, even more fighting in the solo and the duo just before that, O-Main took a good bit of poke by Vicious and Delicious' duo lane, but they also took a decent bit, but they've both been healed up by pots and passives. And in the solo, Tupac and Marauder are having a go at it. Marauder has more sustain because of the, the whip, the scourge, that every three attacks he gets to heal, but Tupac has more protections. And that stun, that stun right there. That is able to disable the Brutalizer's big damage source, which is the slam at the end. That's going to give Marauder all sorts of headaches in this lane. Ooh. Oh dear. That's a very unfortunate two-pack. Actually very nearly killing off Marauder there, but unfortunately didn't quite find the walls to lock Marauder in. Now Marauder actually has his own ultimate. He could go in and kill Tupac if he wants to, but I think Tupac's got a little too much health, so he is still going to be alive. No matter what he does, and more importantly, Benicue's coming over. Oh, main took is again taking a lot of poke in this duo lane. He has to stay up a decent distance to actually taunt them in to allow Siskeia to go for some kind of attack. But at the same time, he's in range of the Furious Roar and an Impale combo into a wall or a pillar. So he's just going to be able to be forced to take either a lot of pots or play less aggressively. Because you, while you can play passively with Athena, it makes going on in the lane a little hard. Yeah, I mean, uh, Athena is one of those very interesting gods of the sort of... You do want to see her, but you've mostly got to actually have lane clear in your ADC because if you don't, she's then going to be forced to use the shield wall fairly aggressively to try and clear out these minions, 
which puts her in an awkward position of taking a lot of damage from the minions and more importantly taking damage from the enemy ADC. And now we're going to see a big rotation from Vicious Delicious actually here. That's four people just to try and secure this attack speed buff away because it is something you want to do. If you can try and get this from a Ho Yi, as you're going to see the evading as well. This is O main, probably dead to rights. The Sunbreaker does come out, but I mean. It's not going to be enough to try and save him against the four-man rotation. That is first blood going to Vicious and Delicious. I like the fact that as soon as they had ults, they just went in. They grouped up and said, hey, what if these two is dying? Hopefully. We want yeah. them to be dead. We don't want to just push them under town. We want them gone. And that's what they got. They secured the first blood bounty. In this case, they managed to get the first blood bounty onto their carry, no less. They got it onto Trifer, so that's going to be a very nice amount of gold going his way. Marauder was able to use the bludgeon. I said brutalize during the last fight. I do apologize, I didn't mean to say that, although that would be hilarious as Chazard. Now, that bludgeon, not the brutalize, the bludgeon, is able to give him a lot of wave clear, because for those of you that don't know how bludgeon works, it gains extra damage on the, sp on the slam the more people it hits with the spin part of it. So, it looks like Tupac was trying to line up the ultimate, gets the stun. As you back right over to the, the mid lane, though, we're going to see a big engage. Ninja Sniper is going to be the first going down. Metempsychosis, very low as well. Not quite going down, though. Didn't hit the um, monkey. The Furious monkey wasn't quite there. Omain is rubber banding around the place a fair amount. I don't know if that's on the client side. It might be. So uh, just keep in mind that may not actually be the case. Although I have seen him lagging a lot in the other games. So could just be that he's got a very bad internet connection. Yeah, there's a rumor going around that he has 667 kilobit upload. But, you know, we never know. It looks like, oh, Tupac with the BM going with the taunt. He actually taunts out Glavius. That could have ended badly if Benny managed to get his hands on him. He's going in with the Unchained and is going to intimidate him with a slightly larger top hat and then leave. You know, sometimes you've got to get a big top hat because the big top hat means that people are going to be scared of you. And it just looks extremely classy. Oh, yeah. Extremely I mean, classy. Like, as you know, as you can probably tell, both me and Verbalocity are of the British nationality, so we know exactly how classy top hats make us look. Even though neither of us never owned a top hat in our lives. We just, it just actually, naturally comes in the heritage. Uh, no, I, I actually haven't owned one. I need to get a top hat I was going to say, now. do you have one? No. I'd like, Apparently well, I they, cost, they cost like a thousand quid or something. It's really expensive. Yeah, that's like the premium ones. They get like linings in them and everything. Back to the yeah. game before we get distracted on fashion. So we're seeing Inverse did pick up a kill. They were able to, and in the solo lane, they did lose the Fenrir roll. That shows me that they're getting a bit antsy in the solo because it's just kind of been stood there. Marauder has been low many times. Tupac as well has been low like he is now. So they want to help him and just push out. But they're being a little too aggressive. They need to be more controlled like they're doing in the duo lane with the ganks. They group up, they wait for the right time and then just go for it. And that's what they've, they've been showing it on one side of the map. Why aren't they doing it on the other? Well, speaking of the other side, solo lane, Marauder going to be getting that kill over there. Very nice job with him. Just enough mana to actually be able to secure that last kill. So it's going to be a little bit better for the side of Inverse Esports. They're actually going to get a nice bit of gold and XP on that Bologna. Although on the, so uh, on the duo side, we're actually going to see beads forced by old main just to make sure that the whirlwind is not going to hit and now suddenly trifer going to get taunted in as well this is probably going to start being very bad glavis going to be here as well very nice for no evil followed by the athena taunt uh, athena ultimate channel through benic doing a lot of damage the ultimate's going to be used and old main is probably going to go down but manga Bay caught out trifer on the rotation and actually going to be able to finish him off getting a kill there as well glavis taking a bit of damage not going to get hit by the Avoid spirit ball though yeah he's Gonna be able to get out of there. I, I was, res I picked him off the list for death. I thought he was gonna get hit by that. There's a little bit of expansion with the spirit orb outside yeah. of the actual model for the stun. I assumed that was what was gonna clip him, but he was able to get out and somehow live. If he, I, I am very surprised that he managed to do that. He must have had what no pixels basically of spare room in that. Probably see, about one. That happened right in the middle of that junction. That junction yeah. is very small. 
It is a very small junction. You can easily, and like, you can't get one per. Yeah, you can only just about get one person around through that thing. You can't really get two people at once. And more importantly, Spirit Ball is about the width of two and a half people or so, or a very large Capri. So you are going to very easily get a lot of people in that. And more importantly, you're going to block off that path pretty quickly. But I think it was just to the side, meaning that there was this little bit of space that the Humbats could just squeeze through. So it was actually safe for him, but only just. Hmm. So. Almost 10 minutes into the game, around 9 minutes, 12 seconds here. Golden XP is in favor of Vicious and Delicious. Nothing too dramatic, but it is still in favor. Over at the... Oh, he got pinged out. This gank attempt on Marauder. He's been warned. He needs to get out, but he stays. The blood rage is real. Down comes Omain to try and support. In comes the whirlwind of rage and steel to knock him into the wall. There's the big top hat coming out. Bellona is able to skedaddle. Flavius comes in. Fino Evil is applied to put Benny into the wall. Tupac is going to try and get his out. He's not going to end up like his real life counterpart. Marauder... Actually, no, never mind. Down he goes into rap hell or heaven. or Whatever you believe in rap. Marauder is going to be... Somehow out of that alive alongside Omain, Glavius is, though is going to be under threat here by Ninja Sniper. He will get taken out by the third part of the Wing Gust. And meanwhile, Mango Debay pops the rain, the, the, pops the thunderstorm and just kind of sits there. Benny, though, is going to get taken. Oh, actually, no, he doesn't get taken out. Ninja Sniper takes out Marauder before Marauder is able to succeed with the bludgeon attempt. And meanwhile, this entire time. Trifer has been pushing extremely heavily on this duo lane tower with Suskir underneath. Yeah, again, with Huyi, you can't really get that great of damage on the wave with Ricochet. You have to sort of either try and get like half the wave cleared or not clear it fully with Ricochet at level 9. Well, um, well, at level 5 because you'll be at level 9 and that's when you have it at level 5. Uh, you can see though, he's still struggling to clear the wave by doing that. And meanwhile, on her does a lot of damage with that impale. It's enough to make it very difficult for Huyi to actually try and fight him and it put him and it put Huyi very quickly under the tower. So that's why he's been having a bit of struggles in terms of gold. You can see that the Anho is about 600 gold ahead, but it's only just, and now Omain's over here, he's looking to try and help out the Huyi a little bit by getting that clear onto the back camps so Shaker can focus on the middle one. Yeah, it looks like that Betty Hugh, I'm not sure who that ping was from, I believe he was called out, yeah, I, but yeah, they're ping, they know he's there, they've spotted Betty Q, and it seems like Metapsychosis was spotted out as well. Vicious and Delicious have a lot of ward coverage around this Gold Fury, they've got three sentry wards just dotted around. <laughs> The Fire Giant is up, that's not going to really be attempted realistically for the next about 15, maybe 17 minutes or so. They're instead going to go for these mid camps, going to accelerate their gold lead, or at least try and claw it back to where it was. Actually, no, they're at, I read the graph wrong. They're actually accelerating it pretty heavily. There's been spikes up and down, but Vicious and Delicious have been eating most of the camps on this map. Yeah. Uh, Vicious Delicious has been doing a very good job of actually securing a lot of these camps. Trying to make sure that these mid camps go in the favor of them rather than inverse. Although we do see Athena Ultimate being t uh, channeled as Marauder gets ganked by Benny Cube. Again, this big, uh, this Mango. big Ragnarok Fenrir isn't going to be doing too much. Oh dear. He's going to be taken very low by the ultimate of Jing Xian. Glavius picked them Ninja Snipe with a nice right. Fado Evil with the help of Mango to base Thunderstorm. Meta Psychosis is going to be helped out with by his team. In comes the Kafraken and the Fenrir. Benny Q picks up Glavius. Meta Psychosis is going to get taken by Shakaya, who goes around the flank. Down comes the Suns to help finish him off. Trifia now is forced to turn his literal tail and run. Or at least try and take a retreating posture because Tupac is there to assist. But fortunately, Benny Q has decided to be excessively greedy. Yes, you're using the skin that shoots money every time you brutalize, but you're not that greedy. Or at least not going to do it without escaping somehow with a less than 10 health. That what? was a very nice play. It, uh, he went around in the right direction to make sure that Inverse couldn't easily aggress on him. However, they are going to be able to aggress on this gold tree if they really want. Try for sitting here, just be like, no, 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 this is, I love this wing bird. Don't hurt him. 
it, it, it's my senpai, and now that's actually going to make them be a lot more careful about what they want to do. So, um, Inverse Esports just going to go back into the lane and actually zone out the Arnher just to make sure that he can't get all of this XP and gold on this minion wave just by zoning him away from that. Yeah, and over in the solo lane. Marauder is doing decent damage to Tupac while he was trembling. He was just able to lay into him with the sword and shield. And then if Tupac was to try and attack him, he's able to block it because of uh, Bologna's shield functionality. She has the same function as Athena's passive, the block, but in an ability. Blavius rotates over, but so does Beniki. Beniki goes over the wall. He doesn't have the stun available, but he does have the Ragnarok. He is going to do merry round the roses. Yeah, yeah he's Ragnarokking out to some of his best music. And we do see yes. Glavius actually going back into the rotation, gonna get the Fearless Monkey onto Benny but it's not gonna move to anywhere. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Magnus Bay is actually getting a little bit of growth on by Ninja Sniper, but not as much as other than the solo as Metempsychosis has now rotated over to try and do something onto Marauder. They may be able to do something. Marauder is in possession of the Eagle's Rally. So he's able to jump out of dodge if things get really bad, and Vicious decide that they should have. They if they decide to go in there, they really shouldn't have, and they didn't, which is good. Although it looks like unvaultable uh, others are going to be burned. Marauder burned his ult at the right time, getting out of the startup animation frames of the War and the Rage and Steel because it takes three times. On each spin, you don't get hit as immediately as soon as the ring appears. He has to physically lurch around with the axe to actually yeah. catch you. So yeah, that's how he was able to get out for the G-Wonder. You can actually very easily miss that first spin. It's quite an interesting way it works. It's sort of... If you are facing the enemy god, you have to actually be looking to the right of them to actually hit the spin correctly. Otherwise, it's just going to miss them until it comes out on the second time. So you're only going to do two ticks of damage on that instead. It's a very interesting thing, and it's the same with Chonga's heal as well, because that goes around in a sort of spin. If you walk out of it, and you were just in front of... Well, if you walk away from her, and you were just uh, to the side of it when she first healed out, you're not going to get that healing. It's a little bit annoying. And it's, you got to just try and walk around it. Over on the solo, though, we're going to see Marauder being aggressed on by Tupac. Tupac was able to go in. He is in possession of Mystical Mail now, so he has two forms of the AoE. He's got his Tremors, and he's got the Mystical Mail now. Marauder is going to try and go for the Shield back, but she gets stunned out in response, and now he, Tupac's just kind of have a tantrum. Uh, Marauder just whips him to heal. That's always going to be a losing trade for Tupac as long as Marauder can keep the attack speed up. If Tupac were to pick up, say, a Megardian and slow down the attack speed enough to where the heavy damage from the Tremors can start affecting him heavily, he's going to be able to win that trade. Although Glavius, Tupac's getting greedy. He sees the Hunbat's ultimate come in. Bludgeon is going to be used. Romer in Victor is going to get shoved onto Tupac. And uh, the I imagine there's a little bit of chaos in the chat right now on Marauder and <laughs> Glavius there. Although, in the mid lane, Mango Debay gets caught in the middle of his Thunderstorm by a perfectly placed circle of protection from Ninja Sniper to come and cancel it out and kill him. Glavius, though, is going to get taken out by the Wingus. That's a double kill for Ninja Sniper. Benny Q may look for a possible Unchained Stun. He doesn't have Ragnarok available. Nice ricochet! By Seskia, he's going to force Benny Q back. He's not going to be able to really stay too long. He does have the Pow. To actually heal off of the Gold Fury, but the Gold Fury gives you 50% less head regeneration or healing off it anyway. That was a recent change, or not too recent, but it was a change to make nonetheless to make note of. A little bit more fighting going on here. Inverse really need to leave before they again come by four members of Vicious and Delicious. Yep, and it, uh, I mean, just avoiding that stumble. Not going to be falling just yet with the On Her Ultimate channel as well. Yeah, sort of about ready. 10 HP left. Yeah. So, now, looking to what options they have, I always like to do this. Oh, never mind. Tupac is going to put the Tremors onto Marauder with the rest Ooh. of Vicious applying damage too, but there's the Rover and Victor. It's going to allow him to leap gracefully out of the IBM servers and live to fight another day. Although, 
Siege-wise, the only tower that's actually fallen this game is one of Vicious and Delicious's. In versus Esports, they were able to push up the solo. And now Vicious are looking to respond by taking tower in the mid, although there's a blink going in by O'Main. The Ragnarok is going to be deployed after the use of the Whirlwind of Rage and Steel. In comes the Fader Weaver, but the Circle Protection gets deployed on top of it. He wants to be able to heal up Tupac. And that fight just kind of awkwardly stalemates unless Marauder can get a really nice engage with Omain. There's the talk from Omain. Unfortunately, Glavius wasn't there to capitalize immediately. And Shaker is fighting his opponent, Trifeo, on the left side, so he can't assist in this fight. Now, Marauder... He could get killed the bludgeon. No, he will not. This fight is still going on, Wiz. Yeah, it's still going on. We're going to see Aimee getting a very nice taunt. Messing Psychosis taking quite a bit of damage, but two packs taking even more. He should be going down. There we go. Marauder finally taking the first blood of that fight. Took him time. But eventually he gets through, and now it looks like Inverse Esports are going to turn it around and actually start sieging this tier 1 tower in the mid lane. Do see Glevius as well jumping over the wall to try and help out. Ninja Sniper is here, but he can't really do anything to help out. Looks like Inverse are just going to split up and go for camps again. Yeah, they're going to be able to take that advantage and run with it. This game has been fairly even with a slight slant towards Vicious and Delicious for most of the game. If you look at the XP and gold graphs, it's just sort of slides down. There's a lot of wavering, though, as each team rests back and forth for control from each other. But now, because of that tower grab and on everything else on top of that, they're going to be able to say assuredly, hey, you guys, we are in control. Let the dictate pace of this game. And right now, Vicious have been wanting to force fights less often, but they've been winning more fights that have been applied to them. A lot You saw in the mid, for instance, Vicious and Delicious, Marauder and Omain especially got very greedy in initiation, and they didn't have their damage with the Mango Debate and Glavius, for instance. They weren't right behind them. Shaker was busy on the left-hand side with Trifer, so he couldn't do anything there, but they went in without the damage to immediately follow up, and that gives just enough time for Vicious and Delicious to respond as they did. Ooh, over in the mid lane, though, we're going to see Athena Ultimate Challenge as well. Ninja Sniper did not even have a chance to live. The Whirlwind of Rage still goes on to Glavius. Barry is taking about half health already. Benny Q going to get taunted into the Lightning Storm, though. He's probably not going to live too much longer. The protections from Ragnarok actually saving him there. Yeah, he probably had the full amount of runes to get, that full protections, you only get the double protections off the full runes. You do get a little bit even without, but it wouldn't have been enough to save him there, I believe. Although Typha, oh. oh no, the lazy back, you don't lazy back without the, enough ward coverage. They didn't have it, and he's going to get five-man Penta rotated on. Although Rissus and Delicious have fully rotated over as well. They're going to be looking to go for Marauder here. Let's see how they do. Yep, Marauder doing quite a bit of damage in the front line. He's getting to a very late game style Bologna, which is very frustrating to actually fight. He's currently building into an Ick file that will let. Well, he's currently got a short bow that will later most likely be built into an Ick file, which Anna currently has, which you can see reduces the base attack. Well, it will reduces the physical power of the enemy to, uh, team and more importantly increases your own physical power, effectively giving you a 60 physical power swing. That's very important mm. as you can see she's now finally built it. And more importantly it also gives you penetration and attack speed. So you're going to be doing a lot more damage, it's going to hurt and you're going to do it a lot more often. Yeah, and Bologna is traditionally built very heavy attack speed. That synchronizes well with a lot of her abilities of course all of her abilities give her a new weapon apart from the ultimate and each of those weapons benefits pretty heavily from having extra attacks but they have some for some form of extra effect on them with yeah. auto attacks so you will see most balloners get cool not necessarily cap but they'll get about three quarters of the way up that bar to about at least like 1.5 1.7 attacks per second because the cap is 2.5 yeah. I mean, um, one thing that we actually haven't touched on just yet, we actually see two heart ward amulets on the side of, side of inverse esports. Now, if you don't know, this aura does not actually stack. So, it's mostly, I think, inverse accepting that they've been picked off quite a bit. So, they're going for these sort of double aura to try and keep them alive. However, they do yep. only have one aura of the sovereignty, which is basically how the Jing Chan's building it over on the side of Vicious and Delicious. 
Yeah. The extra physical protection and the MP5 you get off the Heart Ward is very nice for Inverse because Vicious and Delicious are doing good amounts of work with their physical. We haven't seen too much of tri Trifer for most of this game. He's Ooh, actually, sorry, but I'm going to see an engagement over there. Metempsychosis, no, very low, but Trifer even lower. He's not going to get hit by the second bit of Bludgeon, however, so he's going to live to see another day. However, the Gold Fury leashed again as BeniQ is in the back line. Very nice ultimate from Glavius, though, is going to keep him alive. And now BeniQ probably not going to be getting out of here, but he is with a perfect Spirit Ball from Ninja Sniper. Marauder is getting very greedy here. He jumps way to the tier two of Vicious and Delicious, no less. He could have been back helping out at the Gold Fury. Mango Deve will pick up Tupac. Tupac tried to come in and pick up, but unfortunately, he's going back to Rap Hell again. And now, Inverse Esports are looking very likely to actually go for this Gold Fury, although they said they're going to go for Ninja Sniper. He comes in to try and steal it with their Spirit Ball, but he overestimated the amount of damage they do that quickly, and Glavius gets to feast on the Corpse of Isis. And now they're going to start up the Gold Fury again. Shaker, the only person going for it with Manga Debate, sort of hovering around it. But more importantly, Marauder is about to fall down. Benic, you going to take that out. Very nice taunt, though. He's going to secure him. Now Zeus's ultimate is going to be used as well. Trifus here going to force to use the beat onto Glavius. And now he's channeling the ultimate. It's not going to hit him, though. Trifus trying to 1v1 Manga Debate. But the Aegis Shield comes out. Trifus is going to get the 1v1. Oh, yeah. Now Omain is trying to run away. He does have the slow on him, though. Not quite going to be able to do it. And the Gold Fury still stands. There is Trifer showing up. We, I was saying before before the fight started that Trifer was just kind of been sat in the duo lane doing his farming thing, rotating occasionally for fights and dueling with Shaker a lot of the time. But now, around these fights, he's level 19. He's got most of his build online. He's got the Executioner. He's got the Soul Eater. He's building towards his first crit item. He's going to be doing tons of damage considering that he's passive. Now, admittedly, yes, Ho Yi is the king of dueling hunters because of his passive. And that is true, but at the same time, On Her has more CC, reliable CC than Ho Yi does. Mm. Yeah, he has the knock-up and the stun. It may not... Actually, it's about the same amount of CC, I think. But more importantly, Arna has that repositioning tool with the Impale. Because it actually moves them around and sticks them to a wall. Whereas Hu Yi, it's only a stun. He does have the knock-up on the dive bomb, but it's not as much. Actually, you're going to see Athena trying to contest these mid-camps here. But doesn't really need to. With 26 minutes into this game, if we have a quick look at the graphs, you can see this game is incredibly close with a 1.4 gold lead in favor of Vicious and Delicious. However, it's a 749 XP lead in favor of Inverse Esports. This game is so incredibly close. It can go either way at any point in any time of this game. Yeah, that's what I've liked about this final game of the round robin today. We are seeing... A f there was a few landslides today, but these last two games have been extremely back and forth. Yes, there may have been an emphasis and advantage for one side, but there hasn't been a there lot There is going to be a fight, however. Loaded. Athena forced to use her ultimate. Going to go back in onto Marauder, though. We're going to see the Whirlwind of Rage still go into the back line. Glavius and Shaker forced to use their ultimates. Ninja Sniper are only about 20% health. Very low, Marauder going to dive into it, Nin Ninja just going to get the channel up, but it's not going to be enough, he's down again. Benny Q going to get a very good 3-man stun in the backside, going to be using the Ragnarok onto someone who's going to look for, he's going to look for, oh man, that's not the person he wanted. Going to be able to jump away, though, only one person has died in this fight so far, Marauder going on to Metapsychosis in the background, is finally going to be able to find it, Manga the Bay gets the kill. And with that, that's going to be a 2 for 0 trade. They got rid of the main tank and a huge ultimate in the form of the Circle of Protection. This Gold Fury is going their way, but there's been a lot of emphasis on this. The Fire Giant has been unmolested the entire time. It's just been sat there, you know, just, you know, minding its own business, loving its, you know, cage. But it looks like the taunt is going to come in by Omain, trying to get Tupac off, but Vicious and Delicious steal it! Glavius and Tupac... He's gonna actually no, Glavius will pick up two back, but Benny in the back line, Marauder getting greedy again. This is about the fourth, fifth time in this match. Marauder has gone for the back line way more excessive than they should have, and now he is being punished for it. Rightfully so. I love that play coming out from Vicious Delicious. Distract him with two pack. 
while stealing the gold cherry with the on her ultimate. That was absolutely perfect. So now you know, never listen to rap while you're doing exams because you are going to get distracted. Yes. So, I want to talk about the builds for a sec, just for quickly while teams reconvene and go for the next fight. I imagine Fire Giant is next on the list because... Yes, Inverse could try and Siege, but that's going to be a little hard to do without the Fire Giant buff. We're seeing everyone starting to get online. Marauder has the Frostbound Hammer online. Some people would debate that maybe he should have got that online earlier, but that's more personal preference. Although it certainly doesn't help that Marauder keeps dying from di diving the backline excessively to get these items online quickly. We see the double aura. We are now seeing double Mail of Renewal coming out of, mail, uh, of, out of Inverse Esports. It's a value item still. Even with the nerfs it's had, it is still a very, very good item to have. It's up there with, like, Spirit Robe and Hide of the Ninian Lion in terms of items which you can never really go wrong on buying. Magi's Blessing used to be like that, but not really anymore ever since it was gonna, nerfed. In the middle, oh. we're going to see Messen Psychos taking a lot of damage. He's already used his ultimate. He's got to be careful about fighting Glavius here. Huh. Athena channeling her ultimate Marauder. He's going to be able to take out Ninja Sniper. Manga Bay as well sitting here making sure they're going to be able to get up safely. Benny Q is sitting on the backside. Not sure what he wants what he wants to do, but actually it looks like Omain's gonna get a very nice spawn in onto Messi Psychosis again. He does not have enough life to live. And now Tupac is the only person left in this tower. Benny Q wants to try and defend this as well, but he's four versus two. Manga Dave gonna be channel uh, having the Ragnarok up onto him, but it's immediately gonna be beast away. And now Tupac and Benny Q can't really fight this anymore. Omain gonna get stunned out by Tupac. Benny Q taking a lot of damage from Glaive is going to get taunted in as well. This is probably going to him going down. Forced to use the beads to get away. Glaive is not going to quite hit the monkey as it goes into the wall. But he is still chasing. He wants to go ham. Benicu finally falling down to Glavius, and now he's running away. Looks like uh, the rest of Inverse Esports are actually going to take out the Phoenix, and it looks yeah. like Tupac's being called. Go for it. Why are you not defending this? Shaker. I sh Duo. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like there was some miscommunication there on the part of Vicious. You saw the pings come out. The rest of Vicious was calling for Tupac to go around and try and stop the Phoenix. He may have had the idea in his head that, oh, okay, I'm not defending this. Let's at least try and pick up some gold and put someone on the death timer. You know, Shaker was just killed. It's around 45 seconds at this point. Getting someone on a death timer that long is really nice, especially considering that the real sieges are happening. Vicious and Delicious Phoenix is down. The Fire Giant is the start being contested. You can even see that. There's wards going up all over the place where for most of this match, there's been no, basically no ward there. Most of the fighting has been happening around that left side of the, of the jungle, especially at the Gold Fury. So at this point, getting people on death timers is something you're going to want to look for more than actually getting gold from the kill, because most people are max build or fairly close. Golden levels start becoming less and less important. Yeah, we are. Uh, you can actually see it on the side of Vicious and Delicious, there are only two people who are level 19. We do see a level 18 as well, but we more importantly, there are two level 20. So these XP is basically not going to count, even though there is an XP lead in favor of Inverse Esports. But this is actually finally, they've also taken the gold lead, and it's now pretty much even, and anyone can win this game still. It just depends on these next couple of fights. We're actually going to see the, the Humbats dived in a little bit to try and do a bit of Damage, but couldn't really find anything off of this. Bologna actually was able to recall and more importantly is coming back. They want to look for Fire Giant, but Glavis is just having a time of life trying to beat people up, and mainly this little doggy over here. Yeah, the Fenrir. Now, it was good early game to have the Fenrir. Late game, you're able to get those picks. Unfortunately, most of Inverse, actually no, all of Inverse are armed with beads of some description. Engage is going to be happening. Lots of lots is being deployed, fighting in two parts of the Fire Giant area and one in the pit. Try for getting separated from the first team. Benny Q looking for Maga Debe, but he gets Aegis out. And now Ninja Sniper is going to be under the eye of Marauder. The Frostbound Hammer coming into play and he hammers him into the dust. That's going to be the first kill in this engagement. And now Inverse are in prime position to at least bait a fight at the Fire Giant. They won't want to go for it just yet because the rest of Vicious are still around and looking for it. The taunt is not going to hit Metapsychosis. But Typha, though, is going to get slowed down and disarmed, forced to retreat. The Bludgeon is not going to hit Shell, will be deployed by Metapsychosis. It's only a level one Shell, so we won't do too much reduction. But in comes Benny Q with the stun. 
Yep, Benny Q gonna get stunned out, but forced to jump away already. Mental Psychosis also using that uh, jump away. Then Tupac is in the middle of four of them, but four of them he does not have the damage for. He's already getting slowed out by the Zeus, who I believe also has Gem of Isolation now, so he's going even further slowed. Let's just check this. Yes, he does have Gem of Isolation, which slows for 25%, of which the Lightning Chain already slows for 30%. So it's doing about 50 um, although I believe 40 is a cap point, so as you're going to see another taunt in, though, Tupac taking a lot of damage, but Trifo is going to be the first of all. Yep, and the second person of all will be Tupac getting taken out by Glavius. That's going to be a 2 for 0 sweep in that one. The rest of Vicious Delicious weren't really grouped up for that just yet. Inverse saw that and jumped on it. Benny Q now is trying to just hang around with him, waiting for his teammates to get in. In comes the Ragnarok. He's looking for targets, but that's going to get beast away. There's the upgraded ultimate from the Zeus, allowing him to move around. He is going to pick up Benny Q. That's going to be the first death of this particular engagement. Now Fire Giant is still flinging rocks away. The rest of Inverse are going to be looking for picks. Ninja Sniper, though, is very, very vulnerable without the rest of his team to block, physically block off the enemy. Ninja Sniper will be eliminated. And now Inverse once again turn their attention to the Fire Giant. They will find it. The Middle Phoenix only just came up. And meanwhile, Omain is going to be looking for Metapsychosis. He won't find the taunt immediately, but he may get it later. He's waiting for his teammates. There's the taunt. Can Bologna go in with an ult, potentially? She did, Marauder still has it, although they may not want to burn it. No, there's the burn. He's going to get the extra power from the aura. First Phoenix will fall. And now they're going to be setting their attention to sieging the other two lanes. Yep, and that's exactly what they need to do. They're going to look for this right side solo to tier 2 tower first. Probably, if they want to, they could try and contest the Phoenix, but the best thing to do is just sit back, go farm, and look for the tier 1 on the left-hand side of this dual lane. Much, much easier tower for them to get to, and I don't think Vistalicious could ever contest it. It's pretty much dead weight already at this point in time, whereas the tier 1 tower for um, like Inverse's tier 1 tower is definitely still up for grabs, but I don't think Vistalicious can go that far to try and take it out. Yeah, you, at this point, they don't want to overextend too much, you know, they've got the tower, yay, let's leave. We don't want to lose the Fire Giant buff right now, because considering how close this game has been up until this point, Vicious and Delicious could very easily just start shoving the lanes back and grabbing towers of their own. Yes, they are losing in that front, it, they won't be able to push a Phoenix and get a crippling blow to Inverse's movements around the map immediately, by binding someone to that Phoenix. But they'll still be able to at least do something that leaves them vulnerable. They have decent split pushing potential. Not great, but decent. They could at least try something. As long as they get a decent fight and get strip some of these fire giant belts off of the, the wastes of inverse esports. But inverse are just plowing through vicious and delicious structures here. Yep, they are indeed. One thing to note is Wolfenra well, actually has a level 1 teleport, so as soon as this tower goes down, that is now officially useless. He has to get level 3 to make it even possible, um, which is either going to cost eight, uh, 900 gold, or it's going to cost an extra 200 gold on top of that to get the teleport to gods. But we do see the fight starting up now. Nice Zeus taunt. is going to channel his ultimate. Marauder, though, is trying to find Pixby. He's not able to get it. Bay Q pops the ultimate, but he's going to get beast away. There comes the wall with the Rage of Steel, Feel the Evil, and the Regal's Rally was used. Mango Debay picks up a kill onto Xing Xian. Seika picks up Ninja Sniper in the process. Unfortunately, Metapsychosis popped his ult after, before he went down, I should say. Shaker did pick up Trifor as well. That's a double kill. Phoenix will go down. That is a three for zero trade at the t basically the Titan at this point. They're going around and doing the Phoenix clear. They're laying down the body of Vicious and Delicious, and they're ready to go for the throat. Yeah, and they're also laying down the body of Benny Q is very low. The last Phoenix has now fallen. This is a completely free Titan. No one can contest this on the side of Vicious and Delicious. That's Tupac going down just at the end. But Inverse Esports actually turn around and take out this game. 37 minutes and 31 seconds in, going 29 to 11. Very well done to them. Well, that was a wonderful game to end on. That was really, really close for a long time of it. Vicious yeah. and Delicious and Inverse were absolutely neck and neck in terms of Golden XP. And they were fighting tooth and nail over objectives so much so they were going for each, each other more than the objectives sometimes. But in the end, 
we see that Vicious and Delicious weren't able to control objectives and rotations as well as Inverse. Inverse had a couple of sloppy moments, and mainly with people getting out of position and getting caught out. But at the same time, just their raw comp, they have the big ranged, I don't need to be in the center CC. Vicious and Delicious, they have a lot of tankiness, but all of most of their CC relies on them being the, the place where it actually spawns. You know, the Tremor, Kabrakens at the center. Well, Wonder of Rage and Steel, Jing Xian has to be in the center. Benny Q on the Fenrir, Ragnarok, you have to physically pick them up. Versus, in versus picks, the zoo, so you can just hit, deploy that and run, or float in his case. Glavius, you pop the Fear No Evil and just walk away. Omain is the only real exception, and Omain and Marauder are the only exceptions to those with the Taunt and then the Eagle's Rally. But with the Eagle's Rally, you have so much movement in the first place to get the stun off, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, very well done to this, and we're actually going to go and have a quick look at what happened through the rest of this. So we were watching six games. There were three rounds played by both groups, and this was half of this entry into the finals. So this was a single round robin tournament, and then next week we'll be playing another one exactly the same, and whoever has the most amount of wins overall will be going, there'll be two per group, and those two will be going to the finals. So currently we're going to see risky behavior sitting in Group A, 3 and O this week. So they're getting a whole lot of points. Neil M only lost one, so they're sitting at second seed in Group A, 2-0 two, uh, and 1. Burly Men, 1-0 oh, and 2. And unfortunately for the Nizzle Shizzles, they're sitting at 0-0 oh, oh, and 3 this week. And I believe, unfortunately, they are not going to be... A they don't really want to be around for next week. They are just feeling quite down about this. I hope that they actually come back and still play next week, because they do still vaguely have a chance of getting in. As long as if Neil M loses all three games next week, they are actually not, uh, and Nizzle Shields can actually still fight them for that place. And, and so with that, I think this is probably a good time to wrap up, unless you have any other thoughts. We also have Group B. So that was only Group oh, A. Oh, yes. There's only good Group point. A. Then on the side of Group B, we're going to see Spitfire in first seed, currently 3-0-0. Oh, oh. Free K-Spot is going to be sitting at 2-0-1. Oh, Inverse sitting at 1-0-2. Oh, um, those are like wins, ties, and losses, by the way. Ambition Delicious, 0-0-3. Oh, oh, they may not have a full roster for next week. They unfortunately had to forfeit their last game, seeing as their jungle, I believe, left. So... Yes. Again, they, you, they've got to be quite careful, those bottom two teams. They can still get up and win if they are playing for next week, but they have to make sure they've got the full roster there. And this is where it starts getting a little bit interesting of you've got to get these players who want to work together because if you don't get into the final week, that is that. They aren't going to be able to get into contention for the cash praising in week eight. Okay, I just want to mention one thing. Thank you to everyone who's come out and watched today. We're, it was a little bit rocky the last few weeks with a couple of problems, but things have been running a lot more cleanly. Uh, the only like big problem we've had today is unfortunately Soza's computer decided to lay down and die on him. So I had to jump in, unfortunately. He will be casting for you on EU tomorrow, on, on the EU Sunday. But things have been going fairly well, I'd say, Wiz, considering the last couple of weeks and it's really nice to see so many people turning up in chat yeah. and also watching we've, been, yeah, we've hit like 700 viewers right yeah it's been very good to see everyone coming out don't forget as well like uh, and as verbalosity said we do have the eu tournament tomorrow and that will be vote well i should be soza and shadowboy casting tomorrow so you should definitely go and check that out and we will also have the, this again next week. Same channel, same time, same place. Different casters, though. It's actually going to be Velocity and M-Target next week. So keep an eye out for that one. Again, thank you very much for watching. And we will hope to see you tomorrow, even, on the EU broadcast. I don't quite know the time it starts off the top of my head in Eastern. However, I know for a fact that there is also daylight savings. So be careful 
If yes. you are in America and around that area, daylight saving has is going to happen tonight. So if you forgot about that, that's what's happening. Anyway, I've been talking too long. My name is Lord Wizkid. I have been joined by Verbalocity today. Thank you all very much for watching, and we will see you tomorrow.